So we are going to quickly record a little after party. We had a couple people in and out. We're just coming off of another Star Wars binge, and I got a couple guys in here, and we have stumbled upon some hidden talent. And an old friend of mine, Rob Hammond, who will hopefully take over for myself as GM for our up-and-coming evil campaign, Hell's Vengeance, the Foul Play podcast, where Joe Gibson, to my left here, will make his starring debut as one of our most evil and relying on old favorites like Matt Witt, Ryan Messina, and unforgettable as old man Arif trying out of the box thinking as a oversized barbarian half giant. Why did I let him play half giant? Mr. Frank Hamilton. I'm pulling the best of the best as I can for this. And we've discovered that evil is a thing. It's a genre. It's not just like one Pathfinder society or one Pathfinder um, adventure path. There is an expo coming for this. There are people that have podcasts doing this. And in the house tonight, we have Kenneth Kitchens, who is Dr. Evil himself from the League of Villains podcast. Ken, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight during the after party. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's my absolute pleasure. Now, I, we actually interviewed Ken earlier today, and you will see that soon than later uh, on our Tech of Opportunity. But right now, we're just hanging out with the boys. We're discussing how old we are and the older additions that <laughs> frank you still got those he was flashing that was some old D, man oh do you remember the dice you had to use your own crayon to fill in when they came out of the box <laughs> oh, geez. i remember that didn't have to experience that myself i'm not that old as you rob but, you or, know, or having remember. to go to all your other box games and stealing the dice to have enough to make the game faster because you couldn't just go to the store and buy them I was lucky enough to come along when they started putting them in those clear tubes and they started yeah. as adding the extra D sixes. Yeah. You know, oh, I was a late eighties, right. late eighties, early nineties. And then second edition came out. We had played box set basic, which was the revised with all different colors uh, came after like the stuff you guys were just talking about. We got into second edition and it came out and Larry Elmore's art, Jeff Easley, Parkinson, yeah. dragon Lance, you know, just boom. And we just dug right in there. But I will always, always have a very special place in my heart for the basic red box. I've actually pitched it to these guys I was saying earlier, Rob and Ken, that it was like, hey, we should just play basic. Do have a show and everyone can just, you know, listen and feel how old they are. No? Well, <laughs> now make, maybe not old. No, make, make Frank's uh, collection valid again. Hey, I have those on my show. It's a show I'd listen to. I'd have to relearn the basic rules. Yeah. <laughs> show up. That take, take like what two three minutes? Yeah. Well, you you would definitely want a cast that was just like could entertain through role play and a DM that's understanding to to bend or expand. Uh, I was kind of surprised that Matt wasn't down with this idea. It was like, no, I really like these rule sets that we're doing and not going back. But I Go think ahead. it comes down to he's comfortable with the rules enough that he he's that's a safety net, right? He knows the game, whereas we he'd be in a situation where he wouldn't know, but like. You know, 10 minutes into the game, he'd get it. Trust me, if you can get him to play once, he'd be all over it. Well, we actually had tried a series. We called it uh, Alignment Undetermined. And we found a Pathfinder converted version at 7th level of the old 3 to 5th level Castle Amber or Castle de Amberville, which is one of my personal favorites. And we came up with this obscure party. And I absolutely love Frank Hamilton's Flynn Knoll that I let you play. Yeah. And everyone awesome. uh, he's in there. And they get into the hallway. Sorry, what's that? that I think we made it into like the first main room and that was it. Yeah, we, we there's four episodes. I kind of buried them uh, because everyone had a look. Look at those hits. And it just kind of went. And I'm like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't just keep beating this dead horse for our own, you know. Um, but that's it's not necessarily about the numbers. Like I said, one of our, our second most popular podcasts at the moment is our Star Wars podcast. We shot first and we are running a dead Star Wars system. Saga was the prototype for fourth edition D&D and it was actually better in my opinion their stumbling beginnings before they kind of got into fourth edition and went way off and doing a whole bunch of stuff with cards and um, it has that canon story three months after order 66 you're working for Baylor Gana you're doing his wet work there's no rebellion we shot first 19 years before Han shot Guido hence the name of the show um, but we love Star Wars the system is cool D20 and even though it's, you know, probably never going to make it really, really big. It's our second biggest show. And we had so much fun doing it. We were playing it tonight. 
and we just recycle people and we bring in cameos and stuff we've had rob cameo i'm gonna ask ken to cameo as somebody you know some flashback or whatever you know everyone just loves star wars we're practically using it as currency with content creators we're like hey listen this and this would you would you mind doing an interview <laughs> i'm so busy would you mind cameoing star wars oh yeah 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 what do you what do you guys play <laughs> it's just like here, here we, yeah star wars yeah sure why not uh but how about you ken tell us about uh, the box set that got you going we're all flashing our little collections here like how far back do you go into uh into D D or the sci-fi and i know you're bigger on sci-fi than uh I'm trying to think. It was like early 2000s, so I'm thinking that's three and a half, maybe fourth edition D and D. Okay. And I I kind of went in and out just uh, at the local game store, and it was really I stumbled in uh, once we moved to Pennsylvania. They were playing Storm King's Thunder, uh, fifth edition. Yeah. And it just kind of kind of drew me in. And uh, it's been like three years, and I'm still playing with the, the same group of uh, people. That's cool. We've we've considered fifth edition. It is Forgotten Realms, after all, where a lot of us spent most of our time. Second edition, third edition, Forgotten Realms. Fourth edition put us off of it. We got into Glorian, Pathfinder, woo, brand new world, and we're invested. Um, fifth edition is Forgotten Realms that we know 100 years later, after the spell plague, after you know a whole bunch of events. Right. The only people... Still kick in. Oh, what's he got oh. now? Now he's waving. Oh. Was this Star Frontiers? The Star Frontiers. Frontiers. Oh, don't know that one. There, what was the other one? Uh, Travelers? You guys remember Travelers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, thank you. I was like, I hope I got the name right. Frank's got everything. Travelers was so hard to play. God, you need a degree in physics. <laughs> I remember playing it like a little bit, a couple of sessions with our DM, Doug, that got us into it. Um, before I took over the D&D game from him because I was so obsessed with the screens and everything. He's like, you'd be good at this, you know. And then Doug wanted to, wanted to DM again. He's like, oh, I got this other sci-fi game. You know, Jeff's doing the fantasy and, and we're in the middle of doing stuff. Here, here's Travelers. And we're like, cool. You know, and you have the two races and you could play either race on either side of the war or whatever. And you're just a turncoat depending on which side or which race you are. So you'd be like the human for the humans or if you're the alien race on the human side, well, then you're an informant or whatever and vice versa. Um and I don't remember much after that. There was, just, you said it was like, we're looking at this going, eh, yeah, so about that wizard idea, I understand there's a mystic now for basic D&D. Really? You don't say. No, really, it's a mystic. It's a monk. You know, let's get back into that. Um, <laughs> Come on, Joe, you're holding on to me, buddy. He's so polite. Well, it's all good. It's all good. Where, where, where'd you start? I started... Uh, it would have been red box way back in the day and okay. then took a big break and then did a little bit of second and then took another break and then got into good old 3.5 3 and 3.5 and converted everybody else yep got us going got us going yep got everybody back to getting out of the crappy second because second was good for its time but now you look back at it and you go oh, that's just like how we can look at force and go, yeah, it was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are people that still like it. Uh, yeah, but they don't play any other system. Though. Oh, right? Okay. Like, yeah. <clears throat> at least everything keeps coming up. Like, fifth, I haven't played it, but I've read enough about it that I like it. Well, funny you should say that. Um, we recently, excuse me, recently interviewed Nicole Tuttle, who's interested in possibly not only joining our Mummy's Mask cast uh, while Ashley Palasquale was on hiatus, but possibly doing a one shot in fifth edition. And you're looking at the guys that I would, you know, because I heard Ken plays. Oh, by the way, Ken, you might be in a one shot with us. Just, just breaking news. You know, <laughs> Frank Hamilton, myself. I uh, would, love oh, playing. Yeah. Fifth edition guys, one shot, like on a Sunday afternoon for two hours under Nicole, you know, with whatever she gives us. And I just whoever I can rope on that day going, Frank, Matt, Ryan, you're all fifth edition or Forgotten Realms fans. We'll just fake it. You know, Joe, fifth edition, here we go. You know, Rob, here we go. Ken, you could be the rules lawyer. Make sure you can tell it, can translate for, you know, I got it. and off we go. Um, or just to have, just to sit back and to watch it being played. Like I said, so we don't crowd the house, just to have other people on the mic besides myself, because I'm so entrenched in every show. I'm really going to enjoy an aspect of the production aspect 
of getting Rob behind the screens, of getting Nicole behind the screens, being a player, or even less. We had a show, one of our first shows called Clinton's Core Classics. And we had recruited Frank. And Frank said, my real life DM, Clinton Chard, you know, you should meet him. He would be interested in this kind of thing. So I met him and romanced him in the idea. He didn't know podcasting, everything. Oh, no, no, we got this covered. You know, I got a guy who was podcasting with us and taught me a bunch of stuff, but isn't available on our day. So it would give him a game and we could give you a game and I could play. But Frank couldn't be in, unfortunately. Clint really wanted to play with Frank, like on the podcast, but they were playing Saturdays around their, their meat table. And... I pitched this to him and I'm like, we need to, let's go with like the core rule book. Everyone's playing four-armed Kitsune Ninja Dro. Like, let's go back to a sort of a basic of the easy for you, Clinton. We'll play Rise of the Rune Lords, Pathfinder's favorite number one, right? Frank's been through it twice, so he vouched for it. But sorry, Frank, can't be in the show. Too much meta. And, uh, you know, we'll keep it simple. Advanced core, but right? So we, we have a half-orc uh, monk. We have a dwarf we fighter. We have... Um, Myself, I was playing a half-elf cleric, and I'm usually like, oh, they expect me to be the schmoozy guy, and I went with this sort of disranged, <laughs> talking to my dead girlfriend ghost, little shy guy weirdo. Um, hey, Ashley liked that character, one of our biggest fans. I, I After listening back to it, because I was also, I was producing the show, I was editing the show, um, Clinton Frank came on as executive producers, helped fund the show. And I was only in first season. I got so busy on a Sunday night. I had to like give it up. I'm like, okay, guys, I'll still edit the show. I'll still produce the show. I just can't cast in it. You know, and they found somebody else. They moved on. They kept going. And I enjoyed listening to their show by editing it. And, you know, anyway, on and on, more people further away. Uh, Ayn Willems, who works with us on Friday nights and is in most of my shows, still plays with them and still has a great time. He's on his third or fourth character. Um, And they're going along. And um, they, you know, there was... You get into like you're going one direction with one thing and they want to go another direction and it just, you know, sooner or later. OK, so after a bit of a falling out, not going to lie, um, I just I turned over all the footage like, guys, I I really don't want Aiden to like have to choose. And he really enjoys this game. And I do like your show. And if you don't want to be under my banner, guys, you know, best of luck. Here's all the footage. You know, even though I had a big stake in owning half of it, at least if, you know, and no guys here, you know, here's the footage, everything, blah, blah, blah. I know you've got a podcaster in your group. I know you've got another podcast. Like they, they had the, the resources and they could do it. And now they do, they have their own website. They've continued the show and I wish them the best. And any of our fans that say, what happened to the, you know, where'd it go? Oh no, it's still going. I just say, no, it's over there now. You know, they're not with us anymore to, to go, you know, you're a fan. No, please. You know, it's right over there, man. Best of luck, you know, kind of thing. Um, but on that, we don't ask about them. They don't ask about us. Aiden says, don't ask me. You know, so. <laughs> uh, and that's a risk to take as a network where you're going show, 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 you know, type of thing. But he was my only other GM. And every time we tried to start something new, I was the guy pitching it. And I was the guy like, and I'll run it. And we'll add this person and we'll switch the cast. And it's not enough. It's not enough. We need fresh blood, fresh GMs. I'd like to play too, please. Uh, and take a step back and, you know. <laughs> fresh you know. GMs, look at us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> fresh <laughs> GMs, anyone, anyone, anyone uh, volunteers, you know. Um, Ken, do you do any DMing? Do you dabble behind the screens in 5th edition, sir? I DM for my kids sometimes because they want to they wanna play. That'd be awesome. I, I would love to see a video screen that's like me, your kid, Rob, your kid, Joe, <laughs> you know, oh, and the, and the kids, and, and the kids are like owning here. us, right? We're like, um, how do I do this? And one of your kids are like, Jeff, it, it's there. It's right on you. Oh, thank, thanks, little guy. You know, <laughs> playing away, <laughs> kind of thing. They're, Iron uh, up the wall and having the kid go. You know, what's advantage? Quite creative. Like, you know, what's <laughs> That'd be awesome. That creative is good. Yeah. No, they have they have a whole line of material for kids now. There, I saw stuff and conventions and stuff right here in Peterborough where we had uh, pro family, pro, you know, uh, get rid of the gatekeeping, get rid of the the not access, you know, for all ages, all creeds, all colors, um, all lifestyles, handicap, name it, you know, open access, get the wheelchair, get everybody in there type of thing, safe environment. Don't feel threatened. Don't feel that you need to know your rules as much as these guys you know, that kind of, no, 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 no. Very open, very cool. And for little kids. And they had these adventures they were running that they had on their website. And it was like, 
one was about a troll. It was like the troll's birthday or the troll hates cake or something. And it was it's written for like yes, little, yes. little little kids. The troll hates cake. Yeah, like this little 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 kid. And I thought, <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Where was this stuff when I was like 16 when I was first introduced to it? And I'm I'm fretting over now you like basic rules are like dumbed down we're looking at the first time going what is this you know travelers <gasps> oh no phd no like you said frank nope nope no, no phd i'm not playing travelers look arguing struggling you know evolving through the rules getting older the brace the brain cells slowing down but it's uh <laughs> let's talk a little bit about what's in the future what does the future hold you're looking at a bunch of dudes that are that are dying to be evil, and you've done it. You have a podcast about being evil. Do you have any advice for us out of the gate? Any advice you can give us, Ken, about setting this up, about our tone, the flavor? I understand you're a fan of our trailers. You know, let's pick your brain when we get a chance here. I was very surprised that there was such a large uh, fandom around just evil in general, villains in general. So I would say embrace it. Go all in. Whether you want to be, you know, your your bloodthirsty, uh, evil for the sake of being evil, or if you want to be more of like a a, a Skeletor kind of comedic evil, I would just embrace <laughs> it and just jump in with both feet. You're referring to the line in the trailer where um, they're argue. I do a voice, and Ryan is like, "Yeah," and he Ryan does a voice, and it's Skeletor, and Matt's like, "No, no, 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 that's Skeletor," and Ryan's like, "Yeah, what's wrong with that?" And then Matt comes back with him like. Dude, my laundry <laughs> I was kind of crap and i was That's really it was, it, it was yeah <laughs> it was like your cat is green what the hell is up with that you know i'm freaked out get the, looking at the cat um so much evil out there the player's handbook warns about being charismatic evil and getting along not just being insane you know you don't put three jokers in a room joker's charismatic and manipulates his party that could work but you can't have people that are all just like oh, you know um i enjoyed the concept in Dragonlance where raceland became evil and they ask him why do you follow us why do you follow tennis why do you follow the party evil the party leader and he's like our goals are just going in the same direction you don't think I'd leave when I want to? And like, sure enough, he leaves, you know, and everyone's like, well, saw that coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he no longer needs you guys. You know, he was using everybody and now he doesn't need you. He's gone, right? Um, this story starts off with a female NPC rogue hiring the party to do a heist as if we'd all met. But we might try and take this bit further with backstories because we're looking at a damn fear oracle from ustalov we're looking at oh geez joe what do you got three guys we keep uh, changing yeah. we keep asking <laughs> you've got asking me to change so well it was you know, no he's... no it was this is like Krovax, like you said wasn't working at low level for the play test the idea of the necromancer with uncle and the you know then, then he found an Inquisitor that literally has a big ironbound holy book on a chain, and he beats you with it. That's his weapon. It's a shield. It's his everything. No. And he turns page three. <laughs> oh, you got a, a necromancer will die. Sorry, we're losing you. Oh yeah. yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the <laughs> dodgy internet. I'll just have to finish your story and they'll just have to Bring leave it down and hold up signs. Yeah. yeah really. Kill the video. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm do doing it. Yeah. Coming there to you from space. Killed. Yep. Yeah. Rogers. Ooh, five red oh, yeah, bars. No, so I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah so freaking Rogers. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm now doing the, what am I, what am I actually going to play? Well, oh, my, my half fiend. Inquisitioner, not right. the one with the book. <laughs> right, and then then we talked about oh we have Rob. I'd be a fifth man, and we talked about like remember the video game Overlord where you got minions and you sent them to do stuff. And they would run all over the map and right. So I called you up and I'm like, I know you just took time to make a brand new guy, <laughs> but you know things have changed. October's coming, and you know we might have a new DM. You know because I wasn't going to be the DM for this. We had a guy on the line, and unfortunately his schedule wouldn't mesh. And I was like, oh crap. Well, you know what? Everyone's so excited. I'll DM. 
hell with it we'll make this happen it's gonna be our biggest thing yet you know i'll just suck it up and try and do it so now we have the possibility of rob auditioning and we'll see what works with who um i pitched an idea of overlord to you where you could be a summoner that gets the minions and i would be the first gremlin minion that popped up and can narrate the show you know welcome to the evil play podcast you know i'm first minion blah 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 that kind of thing. Uh, and we could we could envelop your strong silent role play and your awesome tactics that come from Joe Gibson, the player, you know, uh, that kind of thing. But it's up in the air. So yeah. we're teasing, we're revealing, we're talking openly here on the After Party Podcast, but nothing is written in stone. You never know who the final cast will be. You never know. All we know is that come hell or high water with whatever we got going after a lot of debate and a little bit of practice that we're starting right now this summer. When October rolls around and we start dropping episodes, or hopefully a, a couple of them, that we, uh, you know, we're going to try and put our best foot forward. And even if we got to outsource to evil professionals like Ken here, <laughs> yeah, we'll get it. We'll, we'll get it done. Is that on yeah. your business card? Professionally evil. Uh, yeah, it just <laughs> wouldn't it be great? You know, wallpaper and you know, sundry and professionally evil part time. You know, that kind of thing. Um. Frank. Yes. Usually backing me up with your own your own side story. Have you ever played an evil campaign or an evil character before? Like, is this new ground for you? I know it's every player's oh. dream and DM's nightmare going, I always play the evil guy. Can't it be a hero? Nope. Sorry. You're... Yeah, I mean, if I have it, it hasn't been for like a, a really long extended campaign. The closest thing I came was a uh, uh, what was it? Oh, the Shattered Star with Clinton running the game. Hmm. I was playing a neutral evil shadow mage Ooh. who, for the exact reason, I mean, I didn't like anybody in the group, but we both kind of went the same direction because I was going to steal the uh, uh, the end game artifact, whatever it was. I know that story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm in it for the, yeah. you know, for the win at the end. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I did. We played, uh, oh gosh, what was it? Where's the one that takes place in Corvosa? Corvosa. The Adventure Path from Corvosa. Oh, do you mean the one that came out of the Dungeon Magazines or the Dragon Magazines? Their old, old campaign that was like... No, no, no. Uh, this is fairly recent. I played a... I'd never played a monk before. And so I'm like, ah, what the, what the heck? I'll play a, an orc monk that's lawful evil and just wrecked that game. Oh my god, it was brutal. I, I didn't recognize how potent monks were. Oh yeah, especially, spe especially ones that grapple, because they just get a just, hold of you know the boss and owned the game. <laughs> Nasty. And now you're yeah, I mean, so <laughs> we got you playing a half giant ahead. with like a great big sword. Like we've done some play testing, ladies and gentlemen. And like Frank, just like you sure you want me to play? No, oh, you sold me on the idea. Let's so, you know you're in the point by. Oh yeah, now stats are, are leveled and everything. Okay, right. First combat in the hallway. Death, death, death. And I'm like. Oh God, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan and Matt are running around with their like elegant characters going, we're helping, we're helping. It's like, oh good. <laughs> okay. There's some balance there. You know, if I play, I'm going to go for a small character. I'm going to go for like a, with small weapon, you know, like a, a halfling with a, with a razor and do the Sweeney Todd thing or go with a gnome that's got that, uh, <laughs> the great big thunderstone stick or the, 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 the rip saw. It's like this gnome weapon that looks completely psychotic. It's a pole with a spin saw on the end. And you mm -hmm. know those old cars where they had the edged line and you pull it out really fast and it makes the flywheel in the car go and you put it up, right? So they have this rope and they like yank the line and it gets that thing spinning and then they just kind of apply it like a halberd and it does crazy damage on this little dude, right? And I found this great picture that looks like a cameo character I did, uh, Nigel Forsyth. I, I fully expect Sorry? Go ahead. I said I I fully expect to die soon. <laughs> no. Well, I'm gonna pull so much aggro. They're gonna be like, kill nope. that thing oh. first. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and now it's the bad guy's turn. We target Frank, and the caster targets Frank, and the healer doesn't heal. He comes up with some spiritual weapon and targets Frank because that thing, you know. And now the archers kill it with fire. You know, it, yeah. And then the the, the party's pwned because what do you got left? <laughs> a damn fire who stops over everybody to have a drink. I was just taking a minute, you know. A mentally unstable uh, alchemist. Um, yeah. 
an inquisitioner yeah so yeah yeah well joe you'll be left standing going i need a new party just walk off the field yeah <laughs> don't don't mess with him he's with osmodius yeah. yeah we'll see uh rob will have a completely different style completely different tone you know and like i said if all votes are in and i still gm it or whatever you know rob tells me that if he plays that playing evil is very liberating and if can you know please well, can give me that line one today. of the best campaigns i ever ran my main characters that 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 pulled all the strings as it were were evil oh, yeah. and the party never knew until the very end that all these wonderful things they thought were you know they're creating great quests and saving people was they were on the complete wrong side when they got to the end like after months of play oh you were the guy that like went to the board and came back with a quest going hey guys we got this job <laughs> they're like yeah, oh okay <laughs> kept going back to this it was, an, it was an evil alchemist they started collecting stuff for him but they kept going back i never intended them to but he's evil he's like yeah get a good with these guys when they're you know low level adventurers they're on their path to being heroes yeah, that's well, wonderful that's, and well, after naive. like four or five months of play they started to realize that they were getting uh, like kingdoms were turning against them people were hunting them they're finding posters with their names on them like, like <laughs> what, what's going on and, and he just laughed and shut his doors like oh, okay we're done <laughs> God, you're free of my my retainer um, I, I don't think i don't see gary as being evil he's not that self-aware <laughs> no yeah something stabs him he stabs back hard uh rob you're a little heavy on the mic there you want to back oh, off a bit there sorry no usually we're trying to get you to come in there but you're like you're huge on the mic right now yeah um, i moved stuff around a bit when i was playing star wars without joe under doug uh before you came back into the city joe we were playing d20 star wars and i had a jedi and for some reason i'd played several characters because they always my guys always die really easy for doing the right thing getting me behind the wheel of a car was crazy my role piloting roles for any vehicle were completely terrible years went by new system went from d6 to whatever get you behind the wheel and they're like no why watch new player discovers the horror of me like i'll drive <laughs> one <laughs> right so doug decides to put us in episode one in a side story so there's the chancellor you remember the chancellor that gets hires obi-wan and qui-gon and then gets replaced vote of no confidence in chancellor so-and-so and he like goes oh pouty face right it's a very short part right um in that timeline when the movie starts qui-gon are already working for him and they're on the scene checking out the trade federation he rolls back time to there's this tower and the party goes up an elevator to his chambers because they've been summoned for another job obi-wan and qui-gon just had a meeting with them were given that mission to go check out the trade federation and are walking out of the room onto the elevator taking it from us and i'm the only jedi so of course i'm like you know <laughs> doug's like that's a little meta you know like obi-wan is like a padawan he's not known as like okay qui-gon you know like oh it's so happy to meet you right and it's like what are you doing it's like i just want to tell a story one day where i get to like glad hand you know the cool two coolest jedi you know type of thing he made me pay for it later on we're outside we're hovering in this stupid hover car thing that you see all through that they really overdo on coruscant everyone has a two-man two sports car hover car right we're cramming six guys in it for whatever reason and i'm driving they leave me out there with the, with the engine running and uh something goes on and we're like we all go to guns and i pull my saber and it was something to do with um something flying by or you know everyone's just getting ready and i wanted to do something with the saber i can't remember what it was but i rolled a natural one and the d6 days you had to hit a dc 20 with a pool of d6s and get over that just to wield the saber safely or you could hurt someone or yourself in d20 Ah, uh, you're fine, but ones were like mishaps. And of course, back in the day, DMs were like, aha, this happens, right? I grab my saber and hit the button on my hip. So the blade comes out past my hip into the door and takes out a repulsor engine in our car, which starts leaning, grinding into the side of the chancellor's building and score marking with my saber down the thing. <laughs> you know, leave like, we've left our mark on Coruscant. 
later on, Oops. after not being forgiven by the party, okay, uh, this chase ensues. We have to change transport. And again, like, they bitch I drive, but they, are you, fine, give up your gun. I'll, no, you have a lightsaber. You can't do it. You know, you, you drive. Okay, then don't complain. I'm driving. I'm driving. And we're rolling. And he's doing chase scenes. And we're doing all this stuff. And all this stuff happens. And blah, 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 blah. And cross traffic comes. And somebody's shooting some missile or something at the bad guys. And a civilian transport gets in the way. And he hits it. And it just blows it. People, aliens, car to a million pieces. And we do the cool, well, do we drive through the parts? Like, you know, like on the NASCAR race, the guy crashes. Formula. You don't swerve. You just drive through the wreckage and hope to hell you don't hit anything. That's the law. That's the right. So we don't, I don't alter course. I just drive through the wreckage hoping for the best and come out the other side. We continue the chase. This moment in time is completely forgotten for us for like six months of playing with Doug and bounty hunters start showing up and it gets worse and it gets, and we're, th we're like, we've capped every bad guy. We've talked to every so-and-so we've paid every agent. Like we started going back through everyone we've ever talked to and paid them off or phone them up and went, what the fuck? Why do you have people on? Right. Get cornered in a bar. And it got so bad by the time we were like, barely like fifth or sixth level there were like squads of like 20 mercs all just hot for us just like not even caring about collateral damage even though they're pro just to stop us that's how bad they wanted us finally doug caves in he's like do you remember that car that innocent car of people you know that just came through and you guys blew it you know, whatever it's like yeah that was a crime boss's family that we obliterated some you know it was like the wife and all the kids you know, like, oh, honey, you know, don't ever talk about my business. Go home, go to the pool, take the kids. Okay, back to business. So, and there, there's the car of kitties on the way to the pool. And we obliterate them in a million pieces. And someone got our number and like got it on hollow. And he just started like, who are they? Find them, get them type of thing. And he runs a subplot of collateral damage. That's how me and my old GM was. That's kind of awesome, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, and this was inspired by my crappy roles, and this is just the way RDM thinks. So I don't want to hear any shit <laughs> about the way I think, the way I run Star Wars, or you know, uh, any any crap that uh, Rob might pull in the future. Because Doug, buddy, if you're listening to this, he's the man. There's a guy that could just take the most obscure, minute detail and turn it into a huge campaign arc and really make you regret and, the, and yet hate and love the game all the way. <laughs> Here's to you, buddy. You know. and, and really make you hate those club <laughs> roll. Yeah. How about you guys? You got, you got a story to top that one? Uh. <laughs> come on come on when one up is what they're doing they're just queuing the story up no 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 what do you got what do you got uh well back when uh you know right as third edition came out they had a uh, an adventure that we were playing where you got the sword of the dales yeah. it's like a, for a forgotten realm sword or a forgotten realms adventure excuse me where the sword was an actual phylactery for a, a, okay. a demi lich or something like that. Yep. Okay. And I just remember I I thought my character was the coolest shit because I had the sword of the Dales. So we're running through the adventure. We had done the uh, mid campaign. We had done the switch over to third edition. Like holy cow, my guys, way too powerful. Everybody was ninth, and I think I was fourteenth or fifteenth because I was a fighter mage, and the conversion was just ugly. And uh, so we're going through Mithranor and. There's this thing that we've never seen before. So I stab it with the Sword of the Dales. It was a rust monster. <laughs> Failed the, the item save. So the sword turns to dust. And I'm like, oh, wait, I, I, I have this reroll. And I'm I'm like so lucky. I'm like, oh, thank God. I can I can fix this. Rolled it another one. On so top of a I'm, natural one. On top of a natural one. So two natural ones in a row. I just got up. We were playing at my buddy's uh, game shop. I just got up, walked out. This is like midnight, and threw that die as far as I could down Main Street. <laughs> came back in and came back in and sat down. And the the, the guy running the game looks at me and says, "So, how much damage does the hilt of the Dales do?" <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I so, usually it really perturbs me. Somebody gets so mad they throw like their joystick or something when they're Xboxing or whatever. But to to patiently get up, excuse me, 
you know, walk to the door and then just pick a horizon and try to meet it with the dice that has earned your hatred. That's gold, man. I, I love it. Then you come back in and that's how they address the fuming Hamilton. That is awesome. Oh, what's that's the great. Help to the that, that reminds me a little story really quick. We're playing Kingmaker and then it died. And then I tried one of my last attempts of gaming in the basement and we had Matt over Matt Witt, our very own Matt Witt. And he loves this druid he invented called Scree. And he's got this, he's an elven druid with his little falcon guy. And we're playing and we're playing and we're like, okay guys, what rules are we gonna use? Like what variant rules and how about this and how about that? And he's, they were pushing this instant kill double 20 thing. I'm like, what? I've never heard of this. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you, you roll 20, it's possible crit. Yeah, okay, well if your crit confirm roll is another 20, it's possibly instant death like you know possibly instant death and if you confirm that then the guy's right okay so i'm like and my thing is like okay but whatever you guys can do you know the bad guys can do what do you mean well name bad guys okay well name bad. you know okay so they're playing and they get through the first part and then they're doing the bandit encounter in the woods and they have their little uh lean twos and things up in the trees or whatever and Uh there's there's the named bandit like the one you know guy or and they're coming and along comes screen he's running up and they have this barricade and they flip their wagons and they're the party's pinned down and, and matt's kind of going it alone up the side of the map here and he sees them and he gets targeted by an arrow you know and i roll okay you know bandit 20 oh great well bows do triple damage man awesome if i could confirm this right go he says all right pick it up 20 right yeah. everyone's going oh shit you know possible so anyway no one thought it would confirm like oh wow such suspense and and all this stuff okay we had played kingmaker for a little while i finally rewrote matt he came over that day finished his character like a couple hours before like quickly got ready to play okay we're playing the battle had gone on we write his druid in dude lasted five minutes blah 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 first combat i move up the map i want to help these people i cast didn't get the chance to do anything it comes to his turn oh wait the bandits go first right 20 confirm 20 okay so there's that instant death thing yeah yeah I'll re- okay pick it up i shit you not drop it and it's like and he shoots you just like right between the eyes man <laughs> dead anyway he was really cool about it right and i'm like i am so sorry dude like you know, by your own ruling, you guys wanted me to use this crap and blah, 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 triple 20 him and just killed him on the spot. And his dirty's like, oh man, I really like that character. <laughs> He's right. Years later, <laughs> we're, we're trying to play a seventh level thing and he's playing this paladin, Sir Broadwick. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and they get to this thing where you're in this big dynamic meeting with, um, the sylvan forces that are going to rise against the fey and half of them want to rise against you the humans with this crazy fey queen who's coming to get you you know it's the fey queen fey wild seventh adventure for pathfinder real like um tower of thorns walt disney you know that kind of thing like serious in a pocket image like really cool stuff right seventh level there they are and he's like Oh man, my druid would be so cool. So you don't know, brand new party, brand new friends, brand new module. If you want to remake that guy at like seventh level or ninth or whatever, bring him in. He's like, really? Yeah, it'd be a second shot at Scree. Sweet. Put down the paladin, right? Okay. And he comes with Squee. Blah, 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 blah. There she is, the queen of thorns herself. So and so and so and so. And they have like one round to prepare, right? And he's like, nope. And they're all like, what are you doing? He's like, I got this, right? Blah, blah, blah. She has all these spells up. And one was tree stride where she could jump into the columns, which were hollow in her own throne room and be kind of invisible and cast spells through little peepholes and totally mess up the party. Blah, blah, blah. Now I got this. Kicks open the doors, you know, blah, blah, blah. Comes in, gets initiative. And I'm like, oh, dude, it's going to be another. Like, he's just being way brash with this guy. Matt He's destined to die. What does he do? He dumps dispel magic on my caster successfully. Strips her of her key and most powerful spell. And completely ruins my combat. And they just rake her. And the whole combat, I have a party killer on the defensive. Cast this. Summon this. Get out of the way. Blah, blah, blah. Out the window. And they're chasing her. Up in the so-and-so. Josh is playing a barbarian who I baleful polymorphed into a badger 
and fell out the window almost to his death and like like just throwing everything at this party and scree kept on coming and he sends the falcon out the window to track her and she tries to fly away and he's just on it and he's like no 20s this time jeff where's your 20s now and he's going out the window and he's and he, and he takes a bow he takes a fucking bow and arrow and shoots her down it's like it had to be a bow and he kills her with a fucking arrow and he doesn't do it the oh look a natural 20 matt he peppers her with arrows until she's done and kills her and then there's josh at the end of it so did i survive the fall we roll the guy's a barbarian yeah you actually do sweet do i save my will save to like stay me inside the badger because it's only a matter of time before you start thinking you're a bat right he rolls and like for now i get back in there and this badger <laughs> it's like you know runs up the stairs and gets back up there in time for matt's last arrow to kill this thing with arrows all because i let him play the druid and he had this revenge plan and it worked and that's the best dice rolling story that i got <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next time on the after party thank you all for coming <laughs>